Hello, my name is Michelle Morant, and I'm here today with Alexander Rowland. Together, we are co-founders of Cancer Treatment Options and Management, uh, which we founded about 15 years ago now. Precision Oncology, personalized research, uh, long before anybody had even heard of it. <laughs> we were doing it, and uh, we've just kept going. So uh, we also have a, a lab, Liquid Biopsy Labs, that offers some of the world's most advanced diagnostic and treatment monitoring and early detection testing. But that's not why we're here today. Uh, we're here because Alex has put together a presentation for some really exciting new science, specific as you can see on the screen here, immune therapy for cutaneous T-cell lymphomas. And he's going to tell us a little bit about how T-cells work and more about immune therapy specifically and how you can use it to your advantage if you do have specific types of lymphoma. Mm. Yes, yeah. Yes, really thanks. Exciting Alex. news. Um, also exciting, our liquid biopsy is being presented at uh, ASCO 2026 GI right now, this week. <laughs> so uh, th that's exciting news too. But I want to talk about uh, T cell lymphomas because they're really a difficult disease to treat. So uh, cutaneous T cell lymphomas, uh, cutaneous meaning skin, are a type of uh, lymphoma that can also involve other organs, you know, like the blood, the lymph nodes, and internal organs. Now, the unique thing about uh, T cell lymphomas is they're they're much more rare than B cell lymphomas. Most most uh, lymphomas occur in the B cells, bursar cells, as they're referred to. The T cells are the are the cells that actually target and kill things. A tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, CD8 positive. And so what happens when the cells that actually do the killing of the cancer cells, you know, the part of the, the immune system that kills the cancers actually become cancers themselves. That's what happens when you get cutaneous T cell lymphomas. So there's two main types, mycosis fungoides, that's MF. It's typically one half of them. Uh, it occurs in the skin, but also has plaques, patches, and other tumors. There's also Cesare syndrome, which is the presence of lymphoma cells called Cesare cells in the blood. And then you also have some of the same symptoms, you know, red itchy rashes, uh, swollen lymph nodes, but also organ involvement. And so, you know, they, they're very difficult cancers to treat. Usually when I see cases of this, I see both mucoisis fungoides and Cesare syndrome in the same patient. So treatment is fairly standard, you know, standard chemotherapy. There are some targeted agents and of course, stem cell transplants. What is really exciting is previous and recent data show that you can get exceptional responses and durable long-term responses in heavily pretreated patients with refractory or advanced T cell lymphomas, including mucosis fungoides and Cesare syndrome, with a class of drugs called immune checkpoint inhibitors. Now, these are classically referred to as PD1 inhibitors. So, our data shows that T cell lymphomas may constitutively express both PD1R, which stands for the program death one receptor, and PD1L, which stands for program death one ligand. Now, basically what PD-1 is, is it's kind of like a security hall, you know, pass card that allows you to evade the immune system. So what happens is the tumor cells have this PD-1 ligand. When a T cell comes near them, it tries to, and to, you know, to kill them, the uh, tumor cells put their ligand into the PD-1 receptor on the T cell, and it basically inactivates that T cell. And so then the T cell go, go away and they never attack that tumor again. But the interesting thing about PD-1 or about uh, T cell lymphomas is they have both the receptor and the ligand on the T cells versus the normal T cells that only have the receptor. So mm -hmm. let's talk about program death one receptor. It's expressed okay. in all activated tumor or immune cells such as T cells. Binding of the PD-1 to program death one ligand on the tumors turns the immune cells off and results in uh, suppression of mu immune cell responses against tumors. So here's a little diagram. On the right, you can see those orange tumor cells. You can see the PD-1 ligand, and then you can see the T cell receptor, which is TCR uh, on the T cells and the PD-1 receptor. And then you can see a couple of the drugs that are considered PD-1 inhibitors. Pembrolizumab, nivolumab, they work by inhibiting the PD-1 receptor. Atezolizumab, duvalumumab, and avalumumab, they work by inhibiting the PD-1 ligand on the cancer cells. PD-1 receptor inhibitors tend to work better than the PD-1 ligand inhibitors. Can you say more about why that is? Yeah, because when you inhibit the PD-1 receptor, you're 
allowing that T cell to kill anything that looks like a tumor cell. When you inhibit the PD-1 ligand, it's only on the tumor cells. And there's other things that can go on, like the PDL2 can be there too as well. And that can prevent the uh, efficacy of the drugs. Mm. So PD-1 is more thorough, you could think. As a, it's also limited. Yeah, mm. they also have slightly more side effects. So, so treatment of T-cell lymphoma is using PD-1 inhibitors. So as I mentioned previously, in most cancers, and from the previous slide, the PD-1 receptor is on the immune cells and the PD-1 ligand is on the tumor cells. And recall that the PD-1 ligand is used by tumors to evade the immune cells by attaching to the PD-1 receptor on the T cells. However, the T cell lymphomas are very unique because they have both the PD-1 receptor and the PD-1 ligand on the same cell. Double whammy. Double whammy, yeah. Independent of what you're sharing about the drug that can do something about that, that is part of why these are so challenging uh, as cancers to treat is because they're, they're, yeah, they're, they're doubling up against your immune system. Exactly. But it also opens up an Achilles heel with these PD-1 inhibitors. Mm -hmm. So since these T cell lymphoma cells express both the PD-1 receptor and the PD-1 ligand, then it stands to reason that any immune therapy drug that targets PD-1 receptor or ligand results in the healthy T cells attacking the cancerous T cells, mm -hmm. a form of biological vigilantes, where the good T cells kill the cancerous T cells. Right. Yes. Because otherwise they would leave them alone. They would think exactly. you're supposed to, you're part of us, but now exactly. it's, yeah. Okay. And now they've, they've been able to differentiate it because they have both the receptor and the ligand in the same cell. Now there's probably a lot more to it than just that. But this is the main mechanism that allows us to use these drugs on T-cell lymphomas. Wow. So uh, previous study, patients with relapsed refractory cutaneous lymphoma, including both MF and Caesarean syndrome, these patients benefited significantly from pembrolizumab. And this was done back in 2015. In this study, the overall response rate, which is how many patients out of 100 benefit from the drug, was 38% in a heavily pretreated populations, with some patients achieving deep and durable skin results of up to 63 re weeks, which is really good back then. What's really interesting in this study, the um, P PFS, which is a progression-free survival, an average of how many patients stay cancer-free, the one-year progression-free survival was 69%, and over 90% of those patients achieved skin clearance. Plus, the progression-free survival, which means more than 50% of patients remained cancer-free during the duration of the study, um, was not reached. So when, it, when you see a PFS that's not reached, that's a good thing because it means that that 50% minimum that you need to have for a PFS was not reached. That means more than 50% of the patients were still cancer-free. When, when the study had to end. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. they can't go on forever and ever. Yeah, exactly. you know? exactly. No. So, wow, that's great. We don't see that very often. No, that's single agent pembrolizumab. This is the latest trial, 2025, and this combines a drug called lenalidomide. Lenalidomide is often used in lymphomas, it's a derivative of the drug thalidomide. And you'll probably remember thalidomide. It was a drug made by a German pharmaceutical company in the 60s for women who are pregnant and it caused all those horrendous birth defects. So they found that while it also caused birth defects, it also was useful in treating lymphomas. So you definitely don't want to take lenalidomide or thalidomide if you're pregnant. So anyways, in this particular case, they used a duvalumumab, which is just a PD-1 ligand inhibitor, not a receptor inhibitor, and they combined it with lenalidomide. And they found that the combination arm demonstrated a response rate of 75% versus 40% for duvalumumab by itself. Progression-free survival was 21.3 months for the combo versus 14.7 months for just the duvalumumab. And doable response rates at 18, 22, 20, and 34 months were achieved versus limited response rates compared with duvalumumab monotherapy. So combination wow. is a secret here. Yeah, it looks like. Wow. And a high, high number of responders, too. Yeah. So yeah. definitely, this is a interesting area. Uh, here's our plug. You want to get a one-on-one -on -one cancer consultation with us, you can book online or give us a call. It's a great deal. Uh, we'll go through all your records. We have our team of research experts educate you on the best treatments 
and it's really cheap. I highly recommend everyone does that. Also, Michelle's got this wonderful program. It's called the uh, Precision Cancer uh, Medicine Education and Advocacy Program called Just the Facts. Uh, Just the Facts, yeah. Michelle, do you want to tell us a bit about that? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, most important to you folks uh, watching from home in terms of action, uh, A, it's free. B, uh, lots of educational resources uh, from Alex and myself in our 15 years uh, as advocates and uh, keeping up on the most current stuff. Uh, and there's a daily drop in Zoom. Uh, you can come uh, any day. It's uh, 9.30 to 10.30 Pacific, uh, Monday to Friday. So if you want to just get some of your questions answered uh, quickly or learn a little bit more about precision cancer medicine uh, or different types of tests, or maybe your doctor says you've had some genetic testing and you're wondering, A, have I, have I had as much as I can have or need, or is every piece of data that's in my file being utilized? Uh, you can join me here and we start to have that conversation. And uh, of course, if we're gonna talk about treatment options, I'm going to forward you to Alex and his team of doctors who are specialists in that area. But we have a really great group. Uh, we actually just finished up a, a drop-in call, didn't we, Alex? Alex yeah. joined us on. Yeah. Uh, and uh, at least half of the folks in that call were folks who had achieved some excellent outcomes just from joining me in our free program. So I really encourage you to do that. And of course, the YouTube channel. Visit that yeah. and uh, and stay informed and do subscribe. And in the meantime, if this is relevant to you or someone you love and care about, please forward them uh, the video or if specific to you. I highly recommend that you don't just go to your doctor and say, I have this type of cancer. I want to start Pembro. Uh, uh, or I want to do the durvalumab lenalidomide combo. Uh, obviously, the data is here. Alex just showed you. The research is sound. This, this is good, solid peer review science. Uh, the issue is there's a right way to ask. A and uh, coming in you know, with the right information also makes a difference. So you can learn more about that in the drop-ins or through the program as well. Yeah, and just to note, Michelle, in my opinion, is probably one of the top authorities on the application of precision cancer. In other words, bench to bedside application of knowledge. She is a wealth of information on how to get things done, um, how to get your doctor to listen to you, and how to get, get access to these drugs. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. High praise indeed. All right. Well, hope you found this worth your while. Subscribe and stay informed.